the work that was done in, in Mexico, and then we'll follow after that with the last session on where we have a panel discussion with a, a group of bank economists presenting their views and perspectives from their various vantage points. So I will be uh, moderating this next session, and I'm very, very uh, delighted to welcome Gonzalo Hernandez um, to the bank to present to us uh, the Mexican experience with the construction of a multidimensional poverty indicator in Mexico. And James uh, has already referred to the, the Mexican work um, earlier on in his presentation, but I think it's important to emphasize that in Mexico, these discussions that we are sort of embarking on right here have apparently already been underway for many years, and it tells us, I guess, something about who's leading who uh, uh, in the sort of on, the, on the intellectual front um, uh, in these debates. And Mexico has been looking at this issue of multidimensional poverty measurement, I guess, since uh, 2006, 2007. And Gonzalo Hernandez is uh, the executive secretary of CONEVAL, which is the Consejo Nacional de Evaluación de la Política y de Desarrollo Social. It's the National Council for the Evaluation of the Politics of Social Development, and it's the sort of the government think tank on all these issues of uh, poverty measurement and analysis. And uh, Gonzalo uh, has a background in uh, um, economics from Oxford and is also a graduate from ITAM in Mexico. And he has written widely on a variety of, 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 of issues related to poverty and including also a work on labor markets. Now I believe that Gonzalo is accompanied here by Ricardo Aparicio who's also um, with Coneval and who's the Directory of po Director of Poverty Measurement and Analysis. Uh, will you be sharing the presentation somewhat, or will uh, Ricardo He's be here? going to answer the difficult questions. Ah, ah very good. <laughs> Which is the toughest part. So Ricardo is a, a, a good friend and uh, has been working with us for, for, for years, um, and we're very delighted to see Ricardo here as well. And Ricardo is um, a graduate from the National University of Mexico in Actuarial Sciences and also has done work on statistics and sociology in the London School of Economics. <coughs> anyway, we're very grateful for, for you, uh, to you for coming, and um, we look very much to hearing more about the work that's been done in Mexico. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Peter, and we are delighted to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Um, I hope it will be useful for you to um, experience what we experience in Mexico about measuring poverty, and of course we want to learn about you because we understand that you are um, experts who have been thinking about this for a long time. So thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, I think in this session we're going to emphasize, uh, unlike the previous one, ones, uh, the role of the economic policy of all this, the institutional part of the whole thing. So the process of constructing the, the uh, measurement is very important uh, for us. So, so if you allow me, I'm going to present that as well, because that process um, has direct, imp direct implications on the methodology. So a bit of history, just um, briefly. Um, in the year 2004, Congress um, approved a social development law, which has many things. Two important ones for today is that it creates CONEVAL, National Council for the Evolution of Social Development, which is a public institution. We are part of the executive. Uh, within that institution, there are six academic researchers who were elected by the states, by Congress, and by the executive in order to give uh, Carnival technical autonomy. Um, because even we are within the executive, we needed to have more independence. Basically, the reason why Congress created Carnival is because Congress didn't believe fully in the, in the poverty measurements they were delivering the government. So they want to have a more independent way of measuring it. And the objectives of Coneval are two, evaluation of social uh, policies and programs, and also the measuring of poverty in a multi-dimensional way. These are mandates by, by Congress. So it, 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 Congress didn't say only you have to measure poverty, you have to measure poverty using various dimensions. That's the mandate. So um, again, we are, why we're doing that? It is a mandate by the, by the law. But interestingly, the law establishes the main characteristics poverty measurement should comply, and that's all within the law. 
it says that it measurement should be make should be make visible the link between social programs uh, and the measurement of poverty for public policy purposes. So there is always, when you read the law, this important link between measurement and um, and policy. Uh, it's, it's always there. Uh, should be defined both in the space of social rights and in the space of economic well-being. So the law actually says we have to use both spaces, both spheres, to measure poverty. The, the space of social rights and the, the, the space of economic well-being. It includes precisely which dimensions uh, we have um, asked to do the, the, the job. Income, educational gap, access to health services, access to social security, quality of living spaces, housing, ac access to basic services, access to food, and the degree of social cohesion, which I'll talk later about it. Another mandate, we have to measure poverty uh, for the whole nation, for the states, these two every two years, and also for, mu for municipalities every five years. Of course, the main objective of this measurement, unlike perhaps what is the World Bank or IDB or um, UNDP, we are not that concerned in international comparisons, but we are concerned in comparing states and municipalities within, within Mexico. So that's a slightly different um, approach, uh, of course. It is interesting to say that the law stresses a lot the importance of rights to social development. Um, um, therefore, the law was approved un un unanimously by the Chamber of Deputies and Senators. So we see in Conneval that this law, uh, it can be seen as the social consensus Mexico has achieved through Congress. And that's a very important assumption to us. What we are saying is that, A, in order to measure poverty, we have to comply with the law. It, you, it may sound odd, odd coming from Mexico, but we wanted to, to, to comply with the law and that specific aspect. And secondly, we are assuming that what our deputies um, agreed is somehow the Mexican consensus. They were elected to have consensus, and therefore we are getting that input to, um, to be embedded in the methodology, as you will see later on. Therefore, advantage of getting a social rights approach, an advantage of using the constitution and the law to conform the methodology. First of all, it aligns poverty measurement with the normative regulations of the Mexican government. We understand that we are academics within Coneval trying to build a very, um, a very good methodology, but we understand that this method should be used for the Mexican state. Therefore, we have to comply with several regulations in order for this uh, measurement to be used and to be heard from many actors, not only the federal government, but state's government and of course, Congress. It solves somehow, or it helps to solve, problems of weights and even cutoffs. Since human rights are indivisible and interdependent, they all have the same relative importance because they all are so, um, social human rights. That's why all indicators in the social deprivation space have the same weight as, as you will see. The Mexican regulation sets sometimes cutoffs for several dimensions. So we, I mean, our life was a little easier because of course we had uh, important discussions about what type of cutoffs we should have in each dimension. It is part of the, when, when we decide to measure poverty. But since we decide to use the law and the constitution, some of those cutoffs were there already. So. Yes, sir? Just a clarification. So does the law say that these dimensions that are important has to somehow be combined into an index? Is that the law? The or does the law say we have to, uh, these we are the we social have, yeah, we rights? We have to include those, we have to include those dimensions in measuring poverty. That's exactly we what- We wanted one measure. That's right, that's right. So the that's the law. No, it doesn't, no, no. We have to use these dimensions to construct a poverty measurement. Um, 
for evaluation purposes and for targeting purposes. For targeting? Yes. B both, both, uh, both are important for the law. Yeah? No, no, it, it doesn't say, it, do, it doesn't say, um, uh, it doesn't say more specific things. What is the interesting difference then? Sorry? And I don't understand, I've missed something. Well, <laughs> no, but the law, I just want to know, the law is to combine them? No, no, no. We should include these uh, dimensions in the, in the measurement. That, I mean, it has two spheres. The law talks about these social rights all over the place in the, in the, in, in the document, but specifically when it talks about measuring poverty, they talk about these specific dimensions. It's not, it's not only that we are assuming that, um, or we, we took the social rights approach because it is, is in the law, in the, in the Constitution. We also are, are using that because in the law says specifically that, Article 36 of the law, by the way. One more question, clarification. Uh, so a law includes, you need to aggregate these indicators into one dimension. Uh, that's also included in law. It doesn't say that, strictly. It doesn't say that strictly. Okay, speaking. so yeah. dimensions uh, you need to include are uh, described in the law, but aggregation is not necessarily included in that. It is so not written okay. that way. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. That's right. That's so right. The concept, the concept That's implicit in the law. That's implicit in the law. Yeah. yeah. So very briefly about process, we started almost on the first day that Carnival was created with consu uh, consultation with the experts. We wanted to know what is what was going on in in the, in the field internationally. So we talked with with Francois Bourguignon, with Eric, with Caguani, with Nora Lustig, Scofias. Uh, Ma Michael Walton, Candle Re Ready, Juan Carlos Ferez from Chile, Lo uh, Lopez Calva, and, and many others. They wa we wanted to feel what was going on out there in terms of creating a multidimensional poverty measurement because we understood that the challenge posed by us was really, really huge. I mean, it hasn't been solved internationally, and then Congress people are asking us to solve that som somehow, to which was interesting. So we wanted to know what was going on. Uh, uh, on, the ne on next year, we had five more specific consultations to Julio Bolvitnik, um, Professor Chakravarti, James Foster and Sabina, David Gordon, and two of the Mexicans, Ruben Hernández and Humberto Soto. Uh, they were asked to, 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 the question is, well, how would you solve the problem? Uh, at the same time, we had consultations about indicators, thresholds, questions po uh, should be put on the, on the new survey with public institutions. Again, we wanted to have interviews with the public institutions because these guys should be using our method later on. So we wanted to ask them about what they think about it and what type of things we wanted to include th this. We want to have these as a measurement of the Mexican state, not only the Mexican government. At the same time, we were designing the survey. The survey, um, we wanted to have many questions um, because we, we, s we didn't have some of the questions. Of course, this is a combination between um, practical decisions because some of the, the most important uh, number of questions were already there in the census or in, or in our um, house, household survey, but we wanted to include some, include some others and we had to ne negotiate with the uh, Office of Statistics in Mexico, of course. We, we weren't able to put all the questions we wanted to put, but at least we, we, are, we were allowed to put some of them. We keep discussing proposals, uh, proposals as a collection at the same time. Uh, we have some seminars in Mexico, uh, of course with, um, with James, Sabina, and um, David Gordon and many others. And finally, last year, uh, we had the, the, that's a delivery from, the, from, from INEGI, and we presented the method in December um, the 9th, I think. So it was the process. 
which again it is inter it is very important for us to to for you to to know the whole the whole process because that has 